Hi, I'm Sandy Simpson from Apologetics Coordination Team. And this DVD is from an article I wrote back in 2002 called Mistake or Sin. I had heard many uh, preachers begin to the wor use the word mistake instead of sin. And I'm seeing it more and more today. We hear the word mistake coming from pulpits and especially in defense of false teaching and false prophecy. Oh, cut him some slack. He just made some mistakes. We all make mistakes, so don't, don't judge lest you be judged. We even hear the word mistakes being substituted for the word sin in many presentations of what I've basically termed gospel light today. Well, you can't do that. Let's look at some dictionary definitions. Is it proper to substitute the word mistake for the word sin? We'll look at the problem of one word mistakenly used for the other. First, let's look at the definition of the words mistake and sin in the Mer Merriam-Webster uh, Collegiate Dictionary and Merriam-Webster Collegiate Thesaurus. We'll look at the dictionary first and then the thesaurus. In the dictionary, mistake is uh, defined this way. The etymology, it's, first of all, the function, it's a verb. Etymology is Middle English from Old Norse mistaka to take by mistake or mistaka to take uh, more, uh, more at take. Now, this is from the 14th century or so, and it means to blunder in the choice of, in other words, mistook her way in the dark, to misunderstand the meaning or intention of, in other words, misinterpret, don't mistake me, I mean exactly what I say, to make a wrong judgment of the character or, or ability of, to identify wrongly confused with another, in other words, I mistook him for his brother, and the intransitive senses would be to be wrong, you mistook when you thought I laughed at you, um, etc. So that's the definition of mistake. But we have to look at the definition of sin as well. Sin has quite a different definition in the dictionary than uh, mistake does. Sin uh, is from, uh, well, first of all, it's a noun, and its et etymology is Middle English from the word sin. Uh, it's akin to the old high German sunta sin and probably to the Latin sunt, uh, sons guilty. Um, but it's before the 12th century this word comes from. And, of course, we know in the Bible it comes from the very beginning. Uh, the first definition is an offense against religious or moral law, an action that is or is felt to be highly reprehensible. It's a sin to waste food, an often serious shortcoming, a fault, transgression of the law of God, a vitiated state of human nature in which the self is estranged from God. It's the same as offense. So we see that the dictionary, there's no there's no comparison between the two words. Even further, we look at the thesaurus. In the thesaurus, it, the definition is to take for mistake is to take one thing to be another. He mistakes sarcasm for wit. And the synonyms are confound, confuse, misdeem, misidentify, mix, or mix up. Related words would be misconceive, misknow. Addle, jumble, muddle, tumble. Uh, contrasted words would be discern, distinguish, grasp, perceive, differentiate, separate. Antonyms would be recognize. Synonyms would be misunderstand, misapprehend, misconceive, misconstrue, misinterpret, misread. Synonyms would also be misjudge, misdeem, uh, you know, and, uh, and mis misesteem. That's the, the thesaurus uh, synonyms for, um, for, the word, uh, uh, for the word mistake. Now, when we look at the word sin, it's quite different. First of all, again, sin is a noun. And the synonyms are evil, crime, diabliere, um, iniquity, tort, wrong, wrongdoing. Uh, synonyms would be evil, debt, 
wickedness, wrong. Uh, synonyms would be imperfection, deficiency, demerit, fault, or shortcoming. Wow, so that gives us some ideas, doesn't it? Now let's break down the differences between mistake and sin from a secular dictionary and thesaurus before we get into more practical and theological definitions. Let's look at what we just looked at. Number one, the word. The words are different. Number two, the function. Mistake is primarily a verb, sometimes an adverb or noun. Today it's being used as a noun, almost exclusively, when it's actually a verb, to take or mistake. Sin is primarily a noun, but it's also being used today as a verb. Sometimes, you know, it looks like we have almost juxtaposed the grammatical usage of these words in modern English. Etymology. Mistake means to take by mistake. Sin means being guilty. What about the date? Well, mistake is a Middle English word from the 14th century. Sin is a Middle English word from before the 12th century. But sin is a word in Hebrew, and whatever language is spoken in the pre-flood Genesis is a word that's been around from the beginning of time. We can only assume that the word, uh, that the word sin came first. Then the word mistake followed <laughs> on its heels. <laughs> Guess what? People never change. Let's look at the definitions. The definition of mistake is to blunder in a choice, to misunderstand the meaning or intention of, to make a wrong judgment on the character or ability of, to identify wrongly, to confuse with another, to be wrong, mistaken. Definition of sin is an offense against religious or moral law. An action that is or is felt to be highly reprehensible, an often serious shortcoming, transgression of the law of God, a vitiated state of human nature in which the self is estranged from God. Well, do these definitions match? Are they alike in any way? Not really. What about the synonyms? Not only are mistake and sin not synonyms of each other, but there's not one word in common among the synonyms of each one. Wow. So what's the conclusion? There's absolutely no dictionary or thesaurus definition that both mistake and sin have in common. Let's look at some practical definitions. Examples of a mistake. Uh, you add two and two and get the sum of five. You take a right turn when you should have taken a left turn. You think somebody meant something that they did not. You think somebody can do something when they're not able to. You see someone in the, in the supermarket and think he's someone you know when he isn't. You accidentally delete a computer file you really need. Hmm, I'm guilty of that one. When you use the, a word like mistake to, to define something that is a sin. How about examples of sin? You lie, commit adultery, steal, kill, or think about doing them. You treat others in the fruit you don't you treat others not in the fruit of the spirit. You have a character trait that cause you, causes you to subvert moral laws. You teach false doctrine, you make false prophecies, you promote or do actions that go against the precepts of the word of God. You claim new revelation beyond what's written. Can you see the difference now? How can people claim that those who teach false doctrine have made a mistake? Even if a person teaches false doctrine unknowingly, it's still a sin, and it must be repented of when they realize it in order for it to be forgiven. You know, if a person is teaching false doctrine and has been admonished, but it still does not repent, just how far from a mistake is that? I would say just about as far as you can get. Unrepentant false teachers and false prophets are living in the worst possible sin because they're leading, they're in rebellion against God and leading many people astray. Well, but what about the scriptural word usage of the words mistake and sin? The word mistake appears in the 66 books of the Bible the following number of times. <laughs> in the ASV, Zero. In the AV, the KJV, zero. 
In the NIV, five times. In the NKJV, zero. In the RSV, one. And then the YLT, zero. On the other hand, the word sin appears in the 66 books of the Bible the following number of times. ASV, 393. AV, 389. NIV, 421. NKJV, 393. RSV, 398. YLT 406. Are you surprised? Now, to be fair, let's add all the variations of the word mistake, such as mistake, mistakes, mistaking, mistaken, mistakenly, mistaker, mistakers, mistook. With that, we have the following statistics ASV 0, KJV 0, NIV 6, NKJV 3, RSV 3 and YLT zero. Add all the variations of the word sin, such as sinful, sin, sinful, sinning, sinner, sin, sinners, uh, sin, sins, and we come up with the following statistics. In the ASV, it's 750 times. KJV, 766 times. The NIV, a whopping 915 times. Sorry, KJV only people. The new, K, the new KJV, 770 times. RSV, 758 times. YLT, the 761 times. Starting to get the picture? Now I ask you, what does the Bible teach about the condition of man? What does it teach as the problem of man? What does it teach are the actions of men who are sinners? What is the overwhelming message of the Bible with regards to the usage of the words mistake and sin. The verdict is in. Should we then be proclaiming the gospel framing in terms of Jesus Christ will forgive all your mistakes if you just recognize them? Or Jesus Christ will forgive your sins if you repent of them? There's absolutely no way after looking at the evidence already presented that a biblical Christian in good conscience can use the word mistake in place of the concept of sin. Let's look at the rare occurrences of the word mistake in the Bible. We'll use them from the most prolific version and that, that shows them, namely the NIV. Genesis, Genesis 43.12 Take the double amount of silver with you that you must return, for you must return the silver that was uh, put back in your in the mouths of your sacks perhaps it was a mistake leviticus 22:14 if anyone eats a sacred offering by mistake he must make restitution to the priest for the offering and add a fifth of the value to it judges 9:36 when gal saw them he said to zebul look people are coming down from the tops of the mountains Zebul replied, You mistake the shadows of the mountains for men. Ecclesiastes 5 6. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin, and do not protest to the temple messenger, My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Jeremiah 42 20. That you made a Fatal mistake when you sent me to the Lord your God and said, Pray to the Lord your God for us. Tell us everything he says and we will do it. And finally, Mark 12, 27. He's not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. In any of the passages that I just read to you, were they using the word mistake in the place of sin? No. Let's look at them one by one. Genesis 43, 12. Jacob or Israel thought that the silver was in their sacks, that uh, you know, that the silver was in their sacks was a mistake, and this is using the word mistake the same way as the dic dictionary defines it. Leviticus twenty two fourteen, this is an important point. The Bible actually makes a distinction in this verse between sin and mistake. Judges nine thirty six, the shadows of the mountains are mistaken for men. This definition, again, is the dictionary definition for mistake. Ecclesiastes 5.6. This is a second important example. The word sin and mistake are, again, contrasted in this verse. A vow, is, a vow unkept is a sin, not a mistake. 
A sin is a sin, not a mistake. Apparently, people were making the same excuses even in Solomon's day. There truly is nothing new under the sun. Jeremiah 42.20 This is another case where mistake is contrasted with sin. The people made the mistake of asking Jeremiah to pray to the Lord and tell them everything the Lord told him because the next verse states, I've told you today, but you still have not obeyed the Lord your God in all he sent me to tell you. Their mistake was to ask for the truth. To disobey the truth was the sin, you see. This is the same sin that we see today in people who ask for the truth, but when they're confronted with the truth, they do not obey the truth. One command of the Lord is to get away from false teachers and false prophets. It's not a mistake to disobey this command. It's a sin. Mark 12, 27. The Sadducees believed that there was no resurrection. Jesus' response to this disbelief is translated in the NIV and NKJV as, You are badly mistaken. Upon first reading of this verse, it looks like their belief about this false doctrine was a bad mistake. We might assume that since their doctrines were wrong about the resurrection, they were simply argue, arguing from mistaken premise. But we have to look further at this verse for the Greek word translated in the NIV and NKJV as mistaken. Come to find out, there's an English translation problem with this verse. It's not very well translated in the NIV and NKJV. This is where cross-referencings uh, and strongs are indispensable. And I note that for KJV onlyists. The ASV uh, you know, the different translations say, the ASV says, you do greatly err. The, um, the KJV says, ye therefore do greatly err. Uh, NIV, you are badly mistaken. And KJV, you are therefore greatly mistaken. Uh, in the uh, RSV, it says, you are quite wrong. And that YLV is, uh, you are, you, you're very wrong and you're, you're leading people astray, basically. The Greek word translated as error, mistaken, wrong, and astray is uh, planao. And that, the dictionary definition of that is to deceive, err, go astray, seduce, wander, be out of the way, to cause to stray, to lead astray, uh, to lead aside from the right way, to go astray, to wander, to roam about, to lead away from the truth, to lead into error, to deceive, to be led into error, to be led aside from the path of virtue, to go astray, to sin, to sever or fall away from the truth, of heretics, to be led away into error and sin. Notice that nowhere in the definition of this word does it define the word directly as mistaken. The word is not in there, mistaken. The sense is much closer to the words deceived, in error, gone astray, seduced, wandering, or out of the way. As you can see from the Strong's definition, this part of the verse is better translated, you go greatly astray, or you therefore do greatly error, and not you are badly mistaken. It could be translated, you are deceived, you have gone astray, you have been seduced. There's a difference between being mistaken and being deceived, going astray, leading astray, erring, causing to err, which are sins. Being mistaken is to make a mistake. Even the word err is not the same as mistake, not even in our modern English dictionary definition. You know, we say to err is human but it's not done without sin. Sin is error that leads to death. The Sadducees were clearly in doctrinal error and sin. This is a case where the NIV and KJV do not do justice to this verse. The point is that this verse properly translated in the KJV, ASV, RSV, and YLT is not about mistakes at all, but about error, deception, and going astray from the truth. This verse makes the point that the error from the that the error from the truth is deception, not a simple mistake. So what is sin? A biblical def definition. 
1 John 3, 4, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Sin is not a mistake. It is a willing, break, willing breaking of the law. The law of Moses was fulfilled in Christ, the sinless one, who paid the penalty of sin for us so that we would not have to suffer the uh, sin's wages of death. 1 Corinthians 15, 56, the, sting, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Romans 6, 29, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. It was no mistake that Jesus Christ came to redeem us. What, we, what must we do to be rid of sin? Ezekiel 18.30 Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge you, each one according to his ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent! Turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Jesus paid the price. He redeemed us back from death to life if we confess our sins, turn from them and believe that Jesus Christ is the only Son of God, who alone can redeem us and give us eternal life. Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Galatians 4.5, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. In uh, Ephesians 1.7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Romans 3.24, and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And finally, Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You know what? Words matter. I have so many people write to me and tell me to stop warning people away from false teachers and false prophets because they're just human and they're just making mistakes. I always write back to them and point out that teaching false doctrine is not a mistake, but a sin. Claiming to speak for the Lord Jesus Christ things that do not come true or are not biblically true is a sin. The New Apostolic Reformation is teaching a whole generation to think that false prophets are really true prophets who just make mistakes once in a while, in fact, quite often. But there's no such thing in the Bible. They're not only trying to redefine the English language, but to redefine biblical truths. Words have meanings. Third wave false teachers are currently in the process of redefining both the English language and the truths of God's word and calling it new revelation or a paradigm shift. Let's all be careful that we don't take a paradigm shift into foolishness and accept new revelation that drags us further into sin. It's my prayer that those engaged in teaching false doctrines and making false prophecies will cease and desist, realize that they're sinning, repent of their sins, return to the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word and to the foot of the cross. In the meantime, though, I warn you, Beware of false teachers who teach you that sin is just a mistake.